Hi, I thought I'd try something a bit different today. Check this out. The reason you're looking at a blank white screen with a cursor is because I've got myself a new Wacom Intuos uh, tablet and I'm rather taken by this thing. It's one of these pen based uh, tablets that allows me to draw and like artists use these things for you know doing graphic art and digital you know animation and all that sort of stuff but you can use them as simple drawing uh, tablets like this. So I thought I'd try and do some tutorial uh, type videos using this capture tablet and I want your feedback on this whether or not you actually like this uh, format or not because I can do some uh, you know funky stuff with it I can instantly uh, change colors and it's like I can either go light or dark like that and I can change my uh, styles of pens I can instantly uh, er push a button and whoop if I push the right button and erase stuff and I can do lots of much more fancier arty uh, stuff like this but it's just really nice to be able to uh, just you know do a drawing based uh, tutorial just like my regular uh, Dave CAD um, stuff that you no doubt familiar with so I thought we'd give it a go so I'd really like your opinion on whether or not you think this is a good idea and I'll probably put a uh, poll somewhere up here in the uh, corner it should automatically uh, pop up whether or not uh, you'd like to see more of this style of tutorial and whether or not uh, you'd actually like to see this on a second channel like move this sort of uh, screen capture type tutorial content to its own dedicated channel where that's all I uploaded to so let me know if you think that's a good idea or not and let me know what name you'd like to if you like that idea what name you'd like to call that uh, second channel it could be like EV learn or EV tutorial or EV university or something like that um please let me know um yeah some YouTube poll thing will pop up and work anyway let's get to it so what is digital logic and how does it differentiate from the analog world well you might be familiar with a sine wave for example and that has you know zero volts here and one volt here and minus one volt here for example and this is a uh, representation of an analog signal and it can vary anywhere you know within that range for example but you might be familiar that a digital system is represented like this it only has two particular levels like this and these can be called logic one and logic zero they could be called five volts and zero volts it could be 3.3 volts and zero volts might be uh, common voltages for example there's other ones it, it just represents uh, a binary representation of uh, analog voltages so digital is still analog in terms of the actual waveform but the way it's interpreted and represented it's only in binary form like this and it could be called one or zero also called uh true false uh for example and a you know any name you want to give it it doesn't matter it represents two different logic states and because digital still lives in the analog world uh, then we have to actually set boundaries if this is zero volts here and this is five volts here for example our waveform is not going to be absolutely uh, perfect so it's you know it, it might be like this but it might not okay zero and five volts so we have to actually set boundaries in here where something is determined to be a logic one and a logic zero so in this particular case like it might be say four volts just as an example and anything above four volts so anything in here is determined to be a logic one and likewise anything in here is determined to be a logic one and anything under here like this is determined to be a logic zero so these levels can be called one and zero true and false high and low where five volts and zero volts whatever you want to call it but when if the signal is inside this region here then it's an undefined state digital doesn't know what to do with it systems don't know what to do with it so if you've got a slow change in signal like this that ramps up from zero to one volt like this then this time period all this period in here is unknown so your digital system is not going to know how to interpret that so that is why you'll always see digital signals being just 
one or zero with as fast an edge as humanly possible. So in a typical digital logic system, we might have a chip here, for example, that is connected to ground and is connected to 5 volts or 3.3 volts, for example, are very typical modern uh, digital logic levels or even lower, uh, you know, 1.8, 1.2 volts. It doesn't matter. It's going to represent a binary value, 1 and 0, true and false, high and low. And you will have various inputs to the chip and you'll have various outputs to the chip. And these are all going to be either the 1 or 0 or 1 or 0 i.e. in case of a 5 volt rail chip you'd have 5 volts here and you'd have 0 volts here and it's expecting 5 volts on the input and 0 volts on the input here with those margins that we uh, talked about before. So what we need to do is actually look at uh, basic digital gates. These chips are all going to contain digital logic or what's called digital logic gates. And there's only a handful of different types of gates which can be used to make up all any chip be it your latest intel microprocessor that's got you know a hundred million gates in the thing or they talk in terms of transistors you can think of transistors as gates because they're going to turn off and on but we won't go into detail there so let's take a look at your basic logic gates now there are three types of basic gates that you're going to need to know for starters the and gate the or gate and the not gate more commonly referred to as an inverter or an inverter gate so let's take a look at the traditional symbols for these there are two different types of symbols which makes it a bit confusing you should know both of them now uh, they're both defined by IEEE and IEC and that sort of stuff but uh, I'm just going to call these the you know traditional uh, style one so the traditional style style AND gate is a line like that with a curved line like that. You can think of it as a D. Just remember the D and make like that. So you've got one output and you've got at least two inputs. Uh, as we'll see, a logic an and AND gate needs at least two inputs. You can have more, but that's a uh, special case. Now the OR gate is actually shaped like this, curved there, and then like, oh, that's not very good, is it? So we'll just draw that one a bit nicer. Once again, two inputs, one output. Now, the NOT gate is different in that it only has one input and one output. And it's got this circle on the end here. And this is this circle is known as a NOT symbol. Uh, so the inverter symbol, if you just want to draw it on its own, is the triangle plus the little knot there. Now this knot can actually be used on its own, and you've probably seen these on data sheets for chips and things like that. The uh, actual uh, symbol on the, you know, right on the pin, it might have this little knot on it. It's called this little circle, and that implies, well, that particular pin is inverted. But you also need to know the IEC symbols, I'll call them. And they're all boring square boxes like this. And we can put our two inputs and our one output. And it's got an AND symbol in the middle like that. It's actually reasonably descriptive. So from that point of view, I don't mind it uh, at all. And I occasionally use those myself. And the ALL one, once again, our square. But it's got greater than or equal to one, and you'll see why in a minute. So I, I've i never really liked that bit. And our not is once again a square, but it's got one, and then our one input, one output, but instead of putting the circle, they define it as a little uh, 45 degree diagonal line like that. So that just implies the not function, and you might have seen that in some uh, data sheet uh, chips as well. Now, it's actually called digital logic for a reason, because these gates and or and the inverter perform logical functions which we can uh, use to perform uh, computations. It's how computers and everything else, are, you know, modern digital, almost practically everything in modern society works using digital logic. Now, we can use what's called a truth table here, and you have to know these. You should remember them off by heart and uh, learn how each particular function works. Now we've got two inputs here. I've labeled them A and B and the output C here. So you just draw a table like this with our inputs and our on one side and our output uh, on the other side. And you basically uh, fill it out with all of the possible combinations. So the two inputs could be zero and zero, low and low. Uh, it could be zero and one. It could be one and zero, and it can be one, one. We've got two inputs, 
four possible combinations and you might notice if you know well you probably don't know binary if you're still watching this um, this is a binary count from 0 1 2 3 and I have to do a separate video on uh, binary on number systems and the output is a function of these two inputs here so in this case an AND gate the output is true or one only if both A and and get it A and B are one so according to that rule are A and B one no so it's not true it's a zero is both A and B one in this case no it's not is A and B one in this case no it's not are both A and B one in this case yes bingo and that is our truth table for the AND gate, the output here, C, is only true if both A and B inputs are true. That's it. And just like the name of the gate, AND, was descriptive of its functionality here, OR is also descriptive of its functionality. So we go in and we write the exact same table that we had before. So the combination of our inputs is exactly the same as the AND gate. So we write down the four possible combinations. They don't have to be in this order strictly speaking but by convention they start at zero zero and count their way up uh, depending on how many inputs you have so let's have a look at this now the functionality of an OR gate is the output is true i.e. the output is one C is one if A OR OR get it A OR B is one so is A OR B one in this case nope they're both zero so our output is zero is either A or B one? Yes, B is a one. So our output's going to be one. Is A or B one? Yes, it is. And in the final case here, they're both one, but that's okay because it's an or function. Is this one one or this one a one? Yes. So the output is one. That's our or gate. And our inverter is incredibly easy too. We only have one input A and we have one output B. We've only got two combinations of inputs, high or low, true or false, one or zero. And our output, the name once again describes the function. Invert. So it inverts the, basically it inverts, polarity is not the correct term, but it inverts the function of the input. So if it's a zero on the input, you get a one on the output. If it's a one on the input, you get a zero on the output. That's simple. That's our inverter. Now, as far as two input gates go, AND and OR aren't the only ones. There's another special snowflake, which I'll tell you about in a second. But the reason I mentioned these three first is because with AND, ANDs, OR, and uh, inverter gates, you can create any other gate or combination or digital system whatsoever. These three are the ones that you need to do all that. Actually, strictly speaking, that's not true. You only need the not and the or, or the not and the and, and you can create any other logic gate or logic system possible. Okay, so we're going to look at a kind of a special snowflake one here called the XOR or exclusive OR. That's what the X stands for, exclusive, because, well, it's very exclusive gate. But it is also, uh, you know, a common gate used, so it should get grouped together with the other types of two input gates. So AND, OR, and XOR are the three main types of two input gates. So let's take a look at the functionality. Once again, A, B, C. It's easy as one, two, three. Simple as do, re, mi. Sorry, I shouldn't subject you to singing. We've got our inputs just like before. Oh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> the, it's, it's not just a blank box like that. It's actually equals to one like that. That's our IEC exclusive OR symbol. So the exclusive OR function is almost identical to the OR function over here, but it's exclusive, which means that uh, it has a special functionality. Now, just like the OR gate, if A or B is one, then the output is one, but with the exclusive case, and I guess you can you know have a different description for this but the exclusive case of that only when 
A or B is one, is the output one. So in this case, is A or B one? No, so we get a zero. Is A or B one? Yes, we get a one. Is A or B one? Yes, we get a one. Is A or B one? In this case, for the OR gate, it would have been a high, but in this case, it's going to give us a zero. So this exclusive OR is actually a very powerful function that allows us to do uh, controlled inversion, which uh, I might explain later. But yeah, there are three types of two input gates, AND, OR, XOR, with the NOT. Now what we can do now is actually combine the NOT or inversion function with our other three two input gates to give us what are called inverted two input gates. And these are called the NAND gate, the NOR gate, and the X, well, there we go, XNOR gate, and N for NOT. So it's exactly the same, but we've added, the symbol is now adding that NOT that circle on the output like that that I showed you before. So that's actually equivalent to getting a physical uh, AND gate like this and sticking an inverter on the output like that. In fact, you can do that. You can get a physical NAND gate chip, you can get a physical uh, inverter chip, and you can put them like that, and it's exactly the same as buying a NAND gate chip like that, because that's all it contains inside the chip is it's got an extra inverter not circuit on the output. Now you might think, hey, do we have to learn more truth tables for these gates up here, NAND, NOR, and XNOR? Well, yes you do, but if you've learnt the truth tables, or you can derive the truth tables for AND, OR, and XOR here, then you can do the same for the NAND, because we've just added, remember, this inverter on the output. So we can just take our output here, which is C, and what do we do? All our inputs stay the same, they haven't changed, but in this case, we'd have a 1, 1, 1, and a 0. So that is for our NAND function. So that's all you have to do, and likewise here, 1, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0, 1, for the XNOR and the NOR gate. Simple, you just invert the output. So let's actually look at a timing diagram because you're probably familiar with the oscilloscope where it displays voltage versus time. Well, we're just going to look at logic level versus time. So let's uh, take, for example, the, uh, whoop. let's take, for example, the NAND gate here like this, okay? We've got A, B, and C is our output. Now I'm going to draw some signals in here. I'm just going to do these completely randomly and we'll see what we actually get out. So if I go like this, I don't know, do it. There's a little grunty pulse like that. And okay, we've got a signal on A like that. And let's do B. I don't know. Haven't really thought about this at all. Let's see how it works out. So let's look at these two waveforms and see what we get on our C output here using our truth table for the NAND gate. We started out, okay, this is, okay, 0 and 1, okay? 0 and 1 and 0 and 1. So let's have a look. They're both low, okay? Remember, the output's only going to be high when both of them are high. So it's going to be low like this. And in this case, oh, we can sort of do some dashes down there like this to indicate the timing. Okay, so let's actually do the timing for each transition like this. And we can go down and go across and do it. Now, we're following time here. So this input is 1, this input 0. So according to the truth table, we're still going to stay 0. It's only when we hit this point here where they're both 1, bingo, that this will actually transition to a 1 like that. And it'll stay 1 until this point here where uh, the A input drops down low. So therefore, the output must drop down low with it. And we won't see a high again until, oh, you guessed it, round about here. But it'll only stay because, if you follow that down, only a very brief period where they're both high will that go high but in this case a has gone low so that's going to stay low oops it's going to go high again because they're both high look at that and it's going to stay low and low and low until this point here where it goes high and 
down again. So that is a timing diagram and you can see the relationship. So now, uh, if you actually physically hooked this gate up on your breadboard and fed in two digital signals like this with this timing, you would get that waveform on the output. You'd get a, you know, your five volts or 3.3 volts here and your zero volts there. Too easy. So you might have some ridiculously complicated logic circuit with hundreds or thousands of these gates. It's all going to follow these basic truth tables you've learnt, nothing more. And there's no more magic to that. That's all there is to analysing digital circuits. And likewise, if we had a NAND gate there instead of a uh, AND gate, if we had a simple NAND gate, you guessed it, it'd be the inverse of that because it's got that not on the output. Everything is totally, whoop, that was a bit how you doing there. There you go, totally inverted. You get the idea. Now we get on to, and I'm hoping I don't lose people here, we get on to what's called Boolean algebra. Yes, algebra, uh, but in a Boolean digital logic form. Now in this case, uh, we would the output would not be called well, it is still called C, it's labeled C here, but we put what's called a bar on top of it to signify that it's inverted. So it's a not C output or an inverted C output. And these things will tie into Ooh, Boolean algebra. Let's go. Now, what we've been looking at here is what's called Boolean logic. Boolean, uh, named after George Bull back in the 1800s, who came up with the idea that, you know, you can describe a system that's either one or zero, high or low, true or false. And that's, so this is Boolean logic. But now we're going to look at Boolean algebra and when, how we can express all this sort of stuff, you know, practically in tables, we can actually express this mathematically. And trust me, it's not hard. Stick with me. So just like we have mathematical operators you're familiar with, plus, minus, you know, multiply, divide, that sort of thing, we also have uh, Boolean operators that describe the mathematics of Boolean logic. So let's take the case of a simple NAND gate, oh, sorry, an AND gate here like this, okay, input A, input B there, and our output, um, well, our output, we labeled C before, but let's do this uh, mathematically. The output is A and and is represented, here's the operator for and as a dot. So A and B, like that. And that's all there is to it. That is the Boolean algebra expression for the AND gate. Okay, so I'll just redraw that here, A and B like that. And let's feed the output of this AND gate into the uh, input of an OR gate, shall we? So we'll draw our OR gate here, and let's call this input C, because uh, this input here is A and B. It's the output from that AND gate, and this one is just input that we'll call C. Now, what? how do we describe mathematically this output here? Okay, we could call this output D, for example. I'd call it X or anything you want, or just don't call it anything at all like we did here. It's just A and B. So the expression for the output of this combinatorial logic, it's called, because we've combined different logic gates. So it's called combinatorial logic. So D equals A and B, or the operator, the uh, Boolean algebra operator for the OR gate is a plus C. That's it. That is our Boolean algebra expression that describes this gate. So you don't actually have to draw these gates. If you just said D equals A and B uh, or C, then that describes the functionality of that circuit. It's very simple. Now, just like in uh, regular arithmetic that you're used to, there's an order of operations. For example, you might be confused. Is this actually A and B or C, or is it A and B or C, i.e., do B and C go to the input of an OR gate first, or do they go to the input of an AND gate uh, first? So, or like B and C, is it like, are these things actually swapped around? Well, uh, in this particular case, if you wanted to be really clear, you could put parentheses around A and B there to show that, but 
in Boolean algebra, it's assumed that the a that the AND function is going to be performed first unless otherwise stated. So you could actually, if we actually put a if we put parentheses around there like that, then that would imply that we actually had an OR function like this, and we had B and C, and that was going into uh, an, an AND function, boom, with input A here like this, if you draw the parentheses like that. So, you know, the order of operators matter. So if you want to be really clear, then put the parentheses in. Now, let's not forget the notch symbol, shall we? Let's say that we added an inverter on C input here like this. How would you describe that? Well, the inverter, like I said before, uses the bar approach. So we will put a bar above C and that signifies that it's inverted. That's all there is to it. And likewise, if we put a not on the output here of our uh, entire function, so D, then we would put a bar right across the entire expression like that, beautiful. So that shows that we've got an inverter on the output. Fantastic. Okay, so our logical operators, you've seen the AND is a dot, and the OR is a plus, and the NOT is a bar on top of something. So it'll be A and B, A or B, and just NOT A, or it could be A plus, or A or B, and not that. But we're forgetting the XOR gate, our special little snowflake here. Um, because it's pretty close to an OR, it is A plus B. I shouldn't say plus, it's A OR. But, you know, like it's habit. You see it and you say plus even though you mean B. But because it's a special snowflake and we need to signify the XOR symbol is just a circle around the OR or the plus. Easy. Okay, so let's uh, forget Boolean algebra for, for a minute. We'll come back to it in a second. Let's actually analyze a logic circuit like this, a combinatorial logic circuit. In this case, we've got three inputs, A, B, C, and we've got our output here. We'll call X, uh, for example. Now, I said before that you can have more than two inputs on any of the on any of your two input gates, your NAND, your NOR, your XOR, your NANDs, ANDs, ORs, <gasps> exclusive OR, all that sort of stuff. You can have more than one. In this case, I've got a three input AND gate, it's called. So although you may not have actually seen the truth table for this, you can derive it because you would have an extra input over here on this table. So you would, uh, you know, you would go zero, 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 and then you'd start one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, for example, and, oh, what am I doing? There we go, <laughs> one, and one like that. So you would just count up for a three input gate and you'd do the functions on the output. But once again, if all of and all of the inputs are one. This input and this input and this input are one. Then the output is one. So let's try and work out what our output uh, expression will be based on this input, shall we? So let's have a look here. This is A and this is B. So this is A and B. Okay, so this is just a basic two input AND gate. Now the output here is a little bit harder. What we've got is we've got NOT A like that and B and C. So we've got these two uh, Boolean algebra expressions now. Now we can figure out what X is. So X is equal to A and B, or, we'll put parentheses around these, A and B, or, because it's an OR gate, you guessed it, the other expression on the input, A and B and C, like that. Bingo! And say if this was a NOR gate, well, it'd be that function with a big NOT over the top of it. Beauty. 
So that is basic digital logic, and I'll call it quits there because this is long enough already, and we'll need to expand this topic into Boolean logic simplification and how you can actually simplify your circuits using uh, De Morgan's theorem and Carnot maps and other uh, techniques to actually uh, simplify logic because you know if you've got a hundred uh, different gates in here if you can get away with uh, you know minimizing that to 50 gates then you're going to save either the number of chips you're going to save silicon space you're going to save all that sort of jazz but i hope you uh learned a basic introduction to digital logic there and it's not that hard at all once you know your basic uh logic gate types there's not many of them learn how to derive the tables also they're not hard to memorize because it's in the name um, or, and, um, you know, exclusive or is probably the little uh, special snowflake one in there. But it these things are not difficult at all. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And uh, because this is the first video of this type, let me know what you think in the comments down below or over on the EV blog forum. And if you'd like to see more of this content, possibly on a second channel. If you think that's a good idea, let me know. Anyway, hope you found it useful. Catch you next time.